The babysitter had no idea she'd been recorded. This is what she did to the baby. When Rowena and Jack Churchland sat down to watch footage from the video camera they'd installed in their son's nursery, they expected to find nothing of particular concern. They had, after all, only put it in there as a precaution, hoping it would give Rowena peace of mind after she had reluctantly appointed a nanny to look after their precious son one day a week while she returned to work in the family business. For nearly an hour, restless in his cot over what was meant to be his lunchtime gnat, Ollie received no loving words or reassurance. Instead, his stonily silent nanny, before manhandled him several times being picked up, flung roughly against the mobile hanging above his cot so that he banged his head and smacked hard on the bottom three times, making his body shake. The horrified Churchlands could barely believe what they were seeing. Here was a woman who had been looking after their son for 15 months, losing her temper on the first time she had been filmed. Shocked and upset, they took the footage to the police who arrested the nanny. The Crown Prosecution Service then charged her with cruelty to a person under 16 years. The case was heard at Southwark Crown Court last October, yet although Rowena's nanny accepted she had assaulted Ollie, the jury returned a not guilty verdict on the cruelty charge, and she walked free. It's the stuff of parental nightmares. In an age where it is increasingly common for mother and father to go out to work, it highlights the often fragile trust we place in those who look after our children. Rowena, 39, and 30-year-old Jack from Clapham, southwest London, were just such a couple. Together for 10 years and married for 8, they've had two children, Bella, 8, and 2-year-old Ollie. Although we were doing well, we couldn't afford to employ someone in the office, she says. Going back to work when Ollie was three months was the hardest thing I had done, but the business was our livelihood. Initially, Ollie was cared for by his two grandmothers, but as the weeks went on, the couple realized they needed an extra pair of hands, and after asking for help at her daughter's school, it seemed Rowena had found them. We heard that one of the school moms was looking for work, she says. It seemed ideal. She had qualifications in early years training. She had a child at Bella School and was an active member of the local church. When we finally met her, she seemed nice, outgoing, capable, and trustworthy. Jack and I were happy for her to help. The nanny, whom we will call Agatha, started work in autumn 2011. When Ollie was five months old, looking after him on occasional days from 8.45 a.m. to 3.15 p.m. Then, around Easter 2012, Rowena received a call from a neighbor while at work. She said she had seen a baby left outside our house for quite a long time. She was worried Ollie could have been taken. Understandably concerned, Rowena nonetheless felt she needed to allow Agatha a chance to give her side of the story. When I talked to her, she said they were exaggerating, that she had only left Oliver for a few moments to pop back into the house. She was incredibly persuasive. I said we would leave it there, but she must never leave Ollie on his own outside again. Nothing could have prepared her for what came next. Over the course of nearly an hour, she could only watch in horror at the footage of what was meant to be Ollie's lunchtime snooze. So concerned was her mother she suggested installing a video camera, which Rowena initially dismissed as ridiculous. I remember telling her not to be silly. We had friends in common, and I didn't think she would do anything to cross the line. My mom was so in love with her grandson that I thought she was perhaps being overprotective. It didn't seem fair on Agatha to let my mom's scrutiny tarnish things. But as the year rolled to an end, Rowena acquiesced. My mom would bring it up when she spoke on the phone. Eventually, I thought it wouldn't do any harm. It seemed a bit extreme, but I thought we would watch a bit of footage, find out there was nothing to see, and reassure mom. I thought it was the place I would be most likely to see her interacting with Ollie, Rowena says, although I didn't expect to see anything in particular. Indeed, when the couple sat down to watch the footage three days later, it was a relatively casual decision. Nothing could have prepared her for what came next. Over the course of nearly an hour, she could only watch in horror at the footage of what was meant to be Ollie's lunchtime snooze. After flinging him into his cot, 
leaving the curtains wide open, Agatha returns repeatedly to an unsleeping and wriggly Ollie, picking him up and throwing him down roughly. At no point does she speak or attempt to console him. The worst part was seeing his body language. When he was on his own, he was active, but the moment she came in, his body stiffened, as if he was preparing himself for her. Was he frightened? I couldn't bear the thought. Six days later, the police arrested Agatha for assault, later changed by the CPS to neglect and cruelty to a person under 16 years, which carries a longer sentence but requires a heavier burden of proof. We were relieved that it was being taken so seriously, although we would have given anything to not be in this situation, says Rowena. It was incredibly difficult, she says. She wouldn't catch my eye, although her husband stared at me. But my daughter was incredibly happy at the school, and it wasn't fair to make her suffer. The only witness called by the Crown was the police officer who took our initial statement. Neither Jack nor I were invited to give evidence, even though we were willing to. But Agatha was able to give evidence in her defense. As a result, they had to decide whether she deliberately or willfully assaulted him, and if she had done so in a manner likely to cause Ollie unnecessary suffering or injury to his health. Their verdict? Not guilty. I felt so helpless, Rowena says now. I wanted to be Ollie's voice. I felt like I let him down. It is a sentiment with which every parent in the land will feel profound agreement. 